Welcome to Master Theris Uncut, where we discuss the issues others are too timid to discuss. And now, here's James Theris. Okay, we are live here for another episode of Master Theris Uncut. I'm your host, James Theris, and we're going to be talking about a, a very interesting subject today. It's one of my, my favorite subjects, in fact because I think it helps, it surprises a lot of people when they start to really think about what I'm about to talk about. And uh, I think that most people already understand this to some degree, but, I, but, but maybe not. Maybe there are some people who, who haven't uh, really thought about it in the context that I'm going to uh, give it to you today. I've made some notes here on my, my computer screen and I'm going to be, be reading those to you. And if you have any, any uh, questions at the end here, I'll be happy to oblige with with uh, what I can give you on the subject. I want to start though by by talking a little bit about my past and who I was let's say prior to 1993 or so. So 93, 03, 13, about 25 years ago or so. I think that's right, 93? I don't know, it's math. <laughs> uh, that, that's some uh, those sometimes I get get those things mixed up. So, anyway, 1993 is about the time that I'm going to talk about that because prior to that time, I really didn't understand what brainwashing was. I mean, I understood it. Everybody under, understands and probably has heard the term brainwashing, but prior to that time, I didn't realize to the the extent that I was being brainwashed and how to how to harness that power in a positive way. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read down the list here. And uh, let's see, I see Mrs. Shields is on with us. Good afternoon. Good to see you. So t today's topic is about the power of being, or you are being brainwashed. And when I was, prior to 1993, I was a very different person because I chose, I made a lot of wrong decisions. I chose to hang out with the wrong group, the wrong crowd. And I, I you know, I had a, a, one of my parents, I won't say which one, had a very uh, low number of rules for me, let's say. And so I was exposed to a lot of things on television that I probably shouldn't have watched. Uh, there were some, let's say, magazines in the restroom that probably shouldn't have been there. And some other things of that nature that I probably got exposure to way too early and didn't realize how that would those things would later affect my, just who I was. So in, in 1993, approximately around that time, I started to become aware of the power of brainwashing and realizing just how much I had been brainwashed uh, but by some of the things I'm going to talk about today. And then slowly after that, I started to realize that I could do something about it. And I paid a lot more attention to, those, to that topic of brainwashing. And so I remember one of my <clears throat> students was a newer student at the time and they asked me, they said, uh, one of my, my friends or my, my dad says that martial arts is brainwashing. And he asked me, is that true? And I told him, absolutely it is. Because realistically, really, everything is brainwashing. And so martial arts is included. And I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit here. So I'm just going to kind of go down the list here. And then I've got a call to action at the end of my video here today or the end of my, my discussion today that I'm going to ask you to take. In fact, it is a, a two-part two -part call to action. So the first thing that I like to say is that, that the, the power of the mind is much more powerful than you might think. The, the mind is really a supercomputer, and I, and I know many of you have probably heard this before, but it's so, so true. If you look at, uh, I mean, this little thing here, this is the iPhone, that is a supercomputer, and basically the computer is modeled after the human mind. That's why Siri, and, and other voices like that and artificial intelligence are becoming more and more prevalent in today's world because of the ability to kind of harness the power of the mind and turn it into an electronic thing. And so they're, they're creating an electronic intelligence. So we're artificial intelligence. And th so that's where Siri has come in. And you can actually carry on mild conversations with Siri, but I imagine in the next 20 years, we're going to be able to really carry on meaningful, unbelievable conversations with Siri or, and other, other things like her. So it's important to understand that our mind really is that supercomputer that we talk about. And they, they, are, they still haven't really 
come close to harnessing the full power of what we have, but they're getting closer every 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 year. And so uh, we can we make decisions in a split second, and it takes a computer sometimes a split second to make decisions. And sometimes we have uh, in our computer, let's see, our phone or our, our actual hard drive computer. PC or Mac or whatever, if we try to overload it with too many things, it slows down. And if it gets too full, it slows down and it doesn't process as well. Well, our brains are the same way. And so uh, we'll just suffice it to say the brain is a supercomputer. And really, it's just like a computer. If you have your, your phone is not operating correctly, that's because the operating system has become corrupt. You've downloaded a virus somehow or a virus has infected your computer. And so the same thing happens to this computer as well and we get a lot of viruses and things that infect our brains as well and that's part of brainwashing because really brainwashing occurs every day and it occurs with every input that goes in so there, there's an old saying or the, in the computer world that says garbage in garbage out and that applies to our minds just as much as it does to a computer if you upload a virus into a computer what happens well, your computer starts acting funny. It stops doing the, the it stops running the regular functions and doesn't function properly. And then we have to try and figure out and it takes a lot of work to get rid of that virus. And sometimes we have to reinstall the entire operating system to get rid of that virus. And that ha that happens here as well. And so that's why it's important to realize that everything is brainwashing. And the other thing to understand is that brainwashing is usually thought as a negative term, but it doesn't have to be a negative term. In a negative term, there there are uh, there's a uh, a movie called The Manchurian Candidate, where they and another more more modern version of that would be the Jason Bourne series, where they actually go in and brainwash these guys to to plant thoughts into their mind and create uh, soldiers out of them, and they they do things they normally wouldn't otherwise do and that's because somebody's learned how to tap into this supercomputer and install a program that that makes that person do or say or think whatever it is they want them to and so this is actually a a program called uh oh it just escapes me at the moment uh I'll, I'll, mk ultra i think is what it's called you can you can look it up and google it and find out all about it there's a lot of conspiracies built around it but there's a lot of truth to it and they've done lots of experimenting with it and so what, what we need to do as human beings is to, to, to harness the power of that MK Ultra and create our own MK Ultra and learn how to brainwash ourselves in a positive way. Because I'll tell you something, I've met a lot of people in my life and most of the people that I've met, their brains need some washing. Um, I know mine sure did and mine still can, can use some. It's important that we under, have to understand that you're, you are the sum total of everything that goes into your mind. I don't know if you ever thought about that before but honestly you and I are the sum total of everything that comes into our minds so that our eyes are like the camera lens on on a, a camera that that's connected to our phone or computer and it captures everything that comes into it so it's very important we we control what we see and what comes into that uh, that that's a, just just a starting point these also those are like your there are parts of a computer like a microphone and you you everything that goes into it is part of what goes into our brains and starts imprinting. It's it's constantly writing data on our brains, and so that's that's what brainwashing is all about. Um, so so think about how how many things come into your your sight and your sound and into your hands and into your your worldview every day. Well, that's all part of what's washing your brain, and w whether it's coloring it positively or negatively, and and we have control over a lot of those kind of things. So if you're a parent you have children, it's up to you to give your child the best soap. So what is the best soap? We're talking, we, we wanna, you want to brainwash your kids, but it's a positive brainwashing. So what kind of soap can you be in, uh, controlling that goes into your to washing your child's brain? Well, there's really three big things that you can control. Number one, are there teachers? Number two, are there mentors? And number three, are their friends, their associates? You have a lot of control over that. Now, now the, the friends and associates, one, you may have less control because you're not there with them all the time, but it's your job as a parent to get them to realize who's the right influence and who's the wrong influence and try to steer them away from the wrong influences and get them to see the results. We call it future pacing. Get them to see the results of their actions in the future, kind of like the uh, uh, Charles Dickens classic, uh, help me out, uh, uh, Christmas, I can't, I want to say the night before Christmas, but I know that's not right. Um, anyway, you know what I'm talking about, and the Scrooge. So he, the Scrooge comes in, and the, the three 
ghosts come in and they the one of them is a ghost of the future and shows him if he continues on this path what his life is going to be like and so that's what as a parent we have to learn to do that and as teachers we have to learn to do that with our students and our children so that they see the results of if they continue down this path and so that's that's something we all can control and especially as a parent or a teacher or mentor that those are the things we want to try to control as much as possible and then parents if you're a parent it's important you give yourself also the very best soap and learn to lead by example because it's a little hard for uh, it's a little hard talking to your children about things that they should be doing and things they shouldn't be doing if they see us doing those things or not doing the right things ourselves so it just gives you a a better opportunity to to, to teach by leadership and leading by example and uh, so so it's kind of like that old adage that uh, it's not an I guess it's not an adage anymore it actually happens if you travel on an airplane they always tell you you know how to buckle your seat belt but then they talk about in case of a water landing or whatever or something a problem that the air the oxygen mask will drop and that you're supposed to put yours on first before putting the other person's on and that's because basically if you focus on getting your child's on first what happens if you pass out in the process and they don't get theirs on then two of you could could perish if you get yours on and your child is struggling for breath for a moment and that's no no fun but you get yours on now you can comfortably help that child get theirs on and so it's the same thought process in personal development and really what personal development is is brainwashing in a positive way so you have to learn how to tap into the right things all right so number one is or n number eight is you are your habits you are your habits I am my habits guess what your habits begin as thoughts my habits began as thoughts if you really search your soul you'll find that all of your bad habits came naturally they didn't they didn't take a lot of work to develop biting one's fingernails you know sleeping in late those things they don't take a lot of thought behind it in fact it's it's a lot of non thought but the habits that that help develop us and make us better and stronger like working out or eating better or or setting the alarm clock and getting up earlier or getting to bed on on setting the alarm and going to bed earlier as well all these things take effort they take practice that's part of washing your brain to to retrain it so that it'll do it'll do what you want it to do it's you're writing a new program so if you've in the past you've been overweight and you you want to be slimmer you have to start saying to yourself i'm a, i'm slim i'm uh, whatever your your ideal weight is you've got to start saying that and, and verbalizing it and then you back that up with action once the program is installed then it becomes a thought it continually rotates into your brain that's the program running and then it becomes a habit and so that's how you change any habit so that's what brainwashing is really all based upon is changing habits so we want to we want to start with changing our thoughts that's where the whole brainwashing thing comes in is changing somebody's thought so if you go to a certain uh, friend's house and they're constantly you know putting you down and and reinforcing the fact that they're better than you they're brainwashing you to believing that they're better than you and if you continue in that that environment you will believe it as well and you will be half that half of them or s second in line to them you have to start believing you're as good or better than and you you can do the same things that anybody else can do and that's another that's brainwashing you've got to you've got to take charge of that and learn how to, to harness the power of that so you you're either being acted upon or you're acting upon your your subconscious it's, it's it's your decision whether you're going to be acted upon or whether you're going to going to do the acting and going to do something to manipulate that so again brainwashing sounds like it's a bad thing and it can be but it's actually a good thing as long as we realize the power of it and how we can change our own lives and help to change the lives of those people that are that are our significant others and in our sphere of influence you can change the mindset of your friend and your friend's opinions by just talking to them and and telling them your side of it and, and your view of things and if you keep doing it long enough and they get around enough other people that agree with you they will eventually come along with it and agree with you as well that's the power of it and, and if you think not stop to think about if your opinion has ever been changed by one, any of your friends or your parents or teachers when they told you how to think about it slightly differently that's brainwashing okay so your habits begin as thoughts let me ask you a question what thoughts are being cultivated in your mind right now are they average people living living average lives is that what you're filling your mind with is watching average people live average lives so if you're watching sitcoms that's a lot of time that's what you're seeing is is the average person that is is 
not doing a whole lot with their lives and they're they're making fun of it in, in about their situation and laughing about it and we laugh with them and that's what a sitcom is based on a lot of times you don't see a lot of sitcoms like the fresh prince of bel-air where they're in a you know upper upper upwardly mobile up, upper echelon group most of the time they're they're middle middle class or lower class and that's the what a sitcom is based on it's sitcom means situation comedy so it's a situation and most of those situations are average so is that what you're feeding your mind with is i'm average i'm average i identify with this average person or these average people i'm watching on this television show and laughing along with these average situations if that's if that's the case then that's what's programming your mind you're being programmed without realizing it to view everything as average and to identify with that and uh, that may may sound harsh for some of you guys but it's it's true so you've got to learn how to, to look at these things reality TV shows if you're watching shows like the uh, housewives of something or whatever and uh, these other types of shows like that again those are like average people now they may be wealthy because they're on television and whatever but they're average people and if you look at, at the uh, the things that they do and watch and listen to the things they're talking about, a lot of those things are not going to help you get anywhere. They're really, they're infectious to your mind. Uh, so uh, reality TV shows, again, there are some good reality, reality TV shows, but very far and few in between. Uh, next, are you, are you being programmed to fear and scarcity? Well, here's how. If you're watching the TV news every night, that's exactly what's happening to you. If you watch... CNN or Fox News, what are, they, what are they talking about right now? They're talking about a couple of things. They're, they're talking about the, the police and the, the riots and things going on in certain cities. They're talking about the election and different candidates and what's wrong with each one of them. And they're talking about murders and crimes and nothing really good. You, you very seldom see a good human interest story on national news. Occasionally you'll see that on the... Uh, the, the local news but again if you're watching that in the morning and then you're watching that again in the evening you're being programmed with what you're seeing on that screen to be afraid and to believe that there's scarcity in the world so that's what's keeping you from doing more in your life it's important to keep these things in, in mind how about are you being programmed to treat people like dogs or objects okay if you're listening to gangster rap music and it doesn't have to be gangster rap music. It can be rap music that you hear on, on the radio station these days. You listen to a lot of the stuff and pay attention to the words and listen to what they're saying to you. Listen to any Little Wayne song and you'll understand what I'm talking about. In fact, I don't recommend you listen to too much of that. Uh, Drake is another one. I mean, these, these guys, they have, they're very famous and very big in the industry, but they, if you really listen to the message they're selling you, and that, it's not just them. It's other, other uh, pop artists as well you're being programmed with those messages and anytime you hear a word that's been bleeped out you know that there's something there and our mind subconsciously fills that blank in with the word and so that's uh, just because they bleeped it out really doesn't do a whole lot of good it's still entering our subconscious and entering our minds but through our eyes and through our ears uh, that's part of being brainwashed so uh, are you watching sad depressing movies are you watching a lot of horror movies things like that it's okay to watch an occasional one of these things, but if that's your main diet of things you're watching or, or, or listening to, that's what's affecting your thought process and it's shaping your worldview. Uh, or are you listening to empowering stories of overcoming obstacles? See, that's something your martial arts instructor is very, very good at because that's part of becoming a black belt and, and, and staying in the martial arts is learning how to overcome adversities and, and obstacles and going from here to here in, in our lives and doing, doing more with ourselves. Uh, a business person, a successful business person can also teach you these things. And you probably know somebody in your family or friends that has a successful business. Get around that person and listen to the things that they talk about and think about. And also pay attention to the things that they avoid. You're going to hear a lot of people, a lot of successful business people, they avoid the news. And they're, they're, they do that on purpose because they don't want to fill their minds with scarcity mentality and, and uh, fear-based mentality because it affects their ability to run their business. Uh, you can also listen, listen to and pay attention to, to successful athletes and what they have to say and what they're, they're doing because they have a very s a similar stories as far as leading empowered lives and overcoming obstacles. Uh, some are better than others, of course, so use your judgment accordingly. Uh, next is, is, are you getting, having your brain trained to raise your standards on a regular basis? See, if you're, if you're a student at our school, that's exactly what you're getting on a regular basis. We are washing your brain, but we're, we're washing the dirt off of it and getting it clean so we can raise your standards about what's, what's possible for you. Uh, 
your life coaches are great for that and other and mentors and that's again that goes back to parenting you know that's why you want to make sure who your kids are hanging out with uh, you want to control that as much as you can and, and not not just by telling them they can't do it or can't hang out with that person but getting them to realize why it's a bad idea and how it's going to again future pacing and then the Charles Dickens uh, I still can't think can anybody tell me the name of that book <laughs> I know the book but it's uh, it, it I keep thinking the night before Christmas, but I know that's not it. A Christmas Carol, maybe that's what it's called. A Christmas Carol, I think that's what it is. Uh, that's what you've got to do as a parent. And also, that's what you've got to do. You've got to look in the mirror and do that with your, your own life as well. And we're going to talk about that in our call to action. Um, and th the last thing is this. Are you learning something valuable every day? See, there are a lot of, a lot of better things on television to watch than sitcoms. Mind-numbing sitcoms, one after another, that you just sit back and you, ha, 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 you laugh at it. That, that's, that's doing nothing. You're, you're, you're having your subconscious programmed. If you watch documentaries, on the other hand, or biographies, or TV shows, like a, a good example would be Shark Tank, that, that actually shows some skill. Uh, they're, they're teaching you skills through that, and, and getting inside of a successful person's mind as to how they think about success and other things. Those are things that'll, that'll get your brain engaged and get you to think about your own life and what you're doing or not doing. And then, you know, TV shows, like, like I said, TV shows that teach skills. And then there, of course, you can be listening to podcasts like this one. You can be listening or you can be watching uh, videos from Anthony Robbins or Zig Ziglar or uh, thousand, any thousand of other people that are on YouTube for free that you can, you can tap into. And you can flood your mind with these positive things. So you should be reading every day and not just reading the newspaper. That's, that, that can be included in that as long as you don't get caught up in, in, the, in you know, the, the hype that they, that they portray in the newspapers about all the death and you know who got robbed and, and all the bad things. Learn how to look for the human interest stories and, and the things that are going to help nurture your brain. So you want to wash your brain with the right kind of soap. And, and again, I think these things are pretty much self-explanatory for a lot of us, but uh, maybe not. Maybe some of you guys, you're, you're like, wow, I never thought about it like this. And wow, I, I've got to start looking at my own life. So that, that brings me right into the call of action. And my call of action is this. And I want you to do this within the next 10 minutes. In fact, if you can do it right now, that's even better. There's a, a few people uh, on with me right now. And it, it, the, the, the sooner you do it, the sooner you'll be able to make changes in your life. And I know that you want to do that. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take out a piece of paper. And I want you to grab a pen or pencil. And I want you to list, make a list of everything that you're watching, every television show, every movie, and movies you've watched in this past year. Uh, things that you're listening to, radio stations, which radio station are you listening to, what songs are you hearing all the time, what are your favorite musical artists, and, and, and then what, what are you reading? That includes your, your newspapers, your magazines, and your books. Uh, you know, what are you reading? Who, and, and then, of course, most importantly, who are you spending the most of your time with? Write these things down on a piece of paper, and then try to think of every TV show that you watch on a regular basis, every book you've read in the past 12 months, and every movie you've watched, your favorite music artist, and uh, what internet sites you spend most of your time on. Then, the three to five people you spend your, your most time around. Then, using a, a one to five rating scale, I want you to put a number to each, next to each one of those things on your list. Mark a one to three. Now, one is the worst. Three is average, so you, certain things are going to be really bad, some are going to be not as bad, and some are going to be kind of average. You use your best judgment in there. Mark a one to three for items that you know you probably could do without watching or listening to or people that you know aren't a good, are not a good influence on you, people that have you know, really uh, negative outlooks on life or they're, they're, they're you know, speaking ill of other people all the time or gossiping, uh, things like that. And mark a four to five four or a five for those items that you know you should be doing more of. Then take a look at anything less than a four and start to gradually replace those things and people with things or people that can help you improve your outlook in life. Raise your belief in yourself or teach you new ways to think and behave. That's what uh, our martial arts program again is all about, is about teaching people how to think and behave better than what they have been. So it's about raising their standards. We don't like to look at and think of as a, a letter C grade as a good grade. It's an average grade. 
Now, if you've been previously getting an F or a D and now you've got a C, that can be a good grade for a period of time. But again, our goal is to think about getting A's and B's, going higher than, than our averages. And the same thought process in our entire lives and spreading that out everywhere we go. So what kind of things you're putting into your mind, books you're reading, music you're listening to. And by the way, in my car, I don't listen to a lot of music. I listen to music here and there. And there may be a couple of days or maybe a week or two that I'm listening to music more than I am listening to other things. But I'm listening to positive, uplifting podcasts and CDs and, and other audio programs, language programs that can help teach me something. So I use my commute time back between my house and my business for learning time. So it's, it, for me, that's my school. It's my traveling university rather than just sitting back and being entertained by music. But if it's a really nice, beautiful day outside, I have the top down on my convertible and you know I feel like I just want to relax and kick back and enjoy the and take things in, at that time I'll listen to some music. But that's, that's a lot less than, than listening to the positive, uplifting things that I do in my car. So my, my second recommendation is to begin reading a good book daily. Reading books daily. Make it a habit. Uh, it's a great start for anybody who is not already reading is this book right here. And this is called The Greatest Miracle in the World by Og Mandino. It's about 100 and, I think 108 pages, I believe. 108 pages. Anybody can read this. If you're a slow reader, you can read this in a week. If you're, if you're an avid reader, you can read this in about an hour, maybe two hours. It is a wonderful book that kind of helps you get started on a new new path to doing things differently and thinking about things differently. So it's kind of one step in washing your brain. I just you know, looked at, look at this as a kind of a bar of soap. This was the first book that I read of this type of book back in 1993. And that's what really started to change my, my life and started to change my view and outlook on things. And, and my goodness, looking back on myself as, as, as the person I was in 1993 to the person I am in 2016, total night and day difference. I, I have spoken to and met with a lot of my friends over the past 20 years. Uh, most of those people have stayed on the same path they were on back in 1993 and haven't really changed. And it's amazing to, to think, I, I look at them and go, wow, how much have I changed? And I, I look back at that and go, well, I was just like that person. And I, those, the things that they're doing and talking about are the things that I was doing and talking about. And my goodness, I, hadn't, I didn't realize how far I'd, I'd changed from that. So this was the, the catalyst from it. Now. If you are an avid reader already, this is one I also recommend, and this is called Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. This is, there are two versions of this book. There's an updated version of it that's from Maxwell Maltz and Dan S. Kennedy. They're both great. So they, they, go, they really talk about how to program your mind. And so it's, it's a great book for doing just that. And that's, a, that's a, a great start is if you're not reading, start reading something like that every morning and make it a habit. Just decide you're going to read Let's say you're going to read one paragraph a day. Start with a paragraph, and if that's too much for you, start with a sentence. And then the next day, try to add something. Or the next week, maybe even the next week or month, you start adding from one paragraph to two paragraphs. Eventually, that'll become a habit, and that will start to become something that you look forward to doing, and that'll start reframing your thinking. Because really, when you read these books, you're associating with this author. Now, now Og Mandino passed away a long time ago, but you can still associate with him, so to speak, through his writings and you can allow him to influence you and he will influence you in a very positive way. He's got a great story and that this book uh, is kind of almost like a biography about him a little bit but it's done in storytelling fashion. So those are my, my two calls to action. So that's our show for today. I look forward to speaking with you again next week and I wish you a fantastic Level 10 week.